Hello and welcome to the Korean Beauty Show podcast. I'm your host, Lauren Lee, the founder of Style Story, where you can shop, learn and explore the world of Korean skincare and the founder of K-beauty brand Jelly Co. So welcome back to the show. If you are new and we haven't met before, then I'm very happy to have you along here with me. So a little bit of background information about me, I guess, if you're tuning in for the first time and you're like, well, who is this person and why is she talking about K-beauty? So I am a Korean beauty expert. I have been working in the industry for well over a decade at this point, both in Korea uh, and around the world, uh, in Australia. And I have been both an importer and exporter of Korean beauty products. I do now, of course, run my own Korean beauty brand, Jellico. Uh, so that is just a little bit of information about me. And one of the things that I love doing is translating all of the beauty news, the trends and things like that for an audience who maybe cannot speak Korean, who is not maybe um, you know, on the pulse of exactly what's going on in Korea, but wants to get up to speed with all of that. So if you love hearing about all of those kind of things, the top trends, uh, fresh news, then you are in the right place. I am sure that you will find some episodes of the podcast that you will enjoy listening to because at this point we have over 250. Uh, we started the show all the way back in 2020 in the middle of the pandemic. And that was really just a way for me to keep in touch with all of our customers and kind of let them know what was going on. Prior to that, we used to do in-person K-beauty meetups uh, and we had so much fun and it was a really good way for people to like test new products, try new things, ask a whole bunch of questions. Uh, we used to do, you know, parties and things like that. I remember back in the day we did a launch party for Beauty of Joseon in Sydney when they were launching in Australia. So that is kind of like the background to what I have been doing in the industry. Uh, and then obviously the pandemic happened. I couldn't get back to Australia. I was uh, stuck in Korea for all intents and purposes because Australia locked the borders. So I started this podcast uh, as a way to just keep on top of everything, keep the conversation going with everyone back home uh, and really just describe what I was seeing in Korea so that people that couldn't get there um, could keep in touch and keep up with the latest and what was going on. Uh, and that's kind of how the show has evolved from there. Uh, and I was taking a look the other day and at this point we have had over half a million listens uh, on various different platforms, uh, the podcast, we've now got a YouTube channel going, we are on social media as well. So there's lots of different ways that you can follow along with the show, keep up with what's going on. Uh, podcasting is not actually my job. I don't get paid to do this. So what happens is that I, you know, make the time to do it. I share as much information as I can, but I do have a day job and that is running a beauty brand. So from time to time, we're not able to drop episodes uh, and, you know, things happen that get us slightly off schedule. Certainly this year, because this year has been a very big year for me. Uh, I have my second baby and I have had a lot going on in my personal life, <laughs> moving house and a lot of different things. So we are, uh, not on our regular schedule. Up until this year, somehow I managed to get a show out every single week for like four years, uh, but we are a little bit uh, all over the shop at the moment. However, I'm very, very happy to have you here with me. I will get on to the main point of this episode, which if you've seen the show title, you will know that today we are talking about trending Korean makeup and whether it's worth it or not. So when it comes to viral trending Korean makeup, it can be really hard to know which ones are worth the hype and which ones are all just hot air. So luckily for you, I have tried and tested a lot of the top trending products and I'm going to introduce you both to one that have stood the test of time and also some of the newer ones. And I'm also going to share with you, more importantly, ones that I do not think are necessarily worth it. So let's start with one that is really all over the, the place at the moment on TikTok, on um, you know Instagram, and that a lot of people are raving about. And when I tried it, I was like, 
what? <laughs> that was the Fui Pudding Pods. Now, I get it. These are so adorable. The texture is highly Instagrammable. People are like punching little, you know, sponge things into the texture, and you can see that it looks really, really fun. But honestly, when I tried these, I did not understand the hype at all. I found them overly drying and hyperpigmented, but like not in a good way, in the way that's really kind of hard to blend out. And once you've applied it to your face, it's just kind of there and then it doesn't blend very well. Uh, it didn't look very natural to me either. Um, I remember I even tested one of the red ones on my hand and someone thought I had cut myself, like I couldn't get it off. And it was really, really vivid and red. And you know, this person was kind of like looking at me like, oh my God, are you okay? And I was like, it's just a tester from the store. <laughs> so I don't know if that's because I have dry skin and maybe it's just not the kind of texture or product that gels well with my skin skin. I'm not sure. These are getting rave reviews on social media. And that kind of makes me think, is this just a whole lot of people that have gotten this product in PR and who are raving about it because they're either being paid to talk about it or because they, I don't know, maybe they have a different skin type to me and they really, really love it. But for me personally, this one was not worth it. So I don't know if that's helpful to anyone, but if you've been tempted and you have really, really dry skin like I do, this might not actually be the best fit for you. Now, at this juncture, I'm just going to let you know that if you would like to support the show, if you enjoy the show, don't forget to like and subscribe to the podcast, hit the follow button, whatever it's called in your podcast app so that you can follow along each week when the episodes are dropping. And especially because we're kind of out of our schedule at the moment, uh, they're just going to be dropping at the feed a little bit randomly. So if you're following along or subscribe, you will get them when they drop. So just a little reminder there. Now, for a trending Korean makeup product that is actually worth it, and I had mixed feelings about this one at first, but I've come around to it, and that is the Korean makeup spatula. So this tool can be used whether you are a makeup pro or a total beginner, and it is really popular among a lot of Korea's best makeup artists. It's basically a tool that's designed to give you ultra sheer makeup coverage that barely looks like you're wearing makeup, and it gives you effective makeup applications application. It's also uh, good for mixing foundations. So if you're the kind of person that likes to mix different colors and things like that, you can kind of do that and then go in with this specific tool. Uh, and I, it, it took some trial and error for me. Honestly, I am not a makeup artist. I am okay at doing makeup, but I am not like the world's best. And I posted a video on um, YouTube a while ago of me using this with one of my thicker BB creams, because I tried a million different ways to get it to work. And the best way that I had found for this specific BB cream was basically put it on and then blend it out of my face. And people were like, man, you're doing it wrong. I don't know if there is a wrong way necessarily to do a lot of these things because this kind of makeup spatula was not originally used for this purpose in the first place. I know some Australian makeup artists that I spoke to were like, whoa, that's wild that people are using like a makeup tool like that to apply foundation. And I was like, well, it's new, it's different. It's, you know, a new way of doing things. So there are multiple different products on the market from the viral Picasso makeup spatula. Even Coupon has one. So Anand Suk from the Korea Institute of Dermatological Science did a video actually comparing like three of the most popular ones. She tested even like the weight of the product just to kind of see like what the difference was. And her conclusion was that there isn't actually a huge difference in the quality or performance of any of the most accessible spatulas in Korea. So for what that's worth, um, you know, I guess, take your pick. Do you really need to spend a lot of money to get the Picasso one? Or can you go for something, you know, slightly cheaper? Uh, you know, you choose, I guess. She thought that if you wanted like a really, really professional makeup application, that the Picasso one was the way to go. Now, if you're just a little bit of a like middleman like me, you're not the world's best makeup artist, but you're also not like starting for the very first time, then, you know, I think probably one of the, one of those slightly cheaper ones is probably fine as as well. So another product that I don't think I've shared before that I have used for at least a year that I really, really love and rate is the Dasik Pro Concealer 
palette. Now, this is a palette product that comes in like a little square and it has nine different shades that you can choose from. And basically you can customize and blend everything from, um, you know, correcting imperfections. You can correct your blemishes, discolorations, all of that. So I tend to use it. I use the green color whenever I get a breakout because green is opposite to red on the color scale. So they cancel each other out. The other big thing that I'm using it for a lot at the moment, because I've dark circles from not getting sleep with my baby is the the lighter colors um, and basically just pop it along under my eye I mean you can conceal anything you can you can um, contour anything anywhere that you want to contour as well one of the reasons that I really really love this product is because I personally have found it hard to contour with a lot of the powder based products because I tend to use Korean cushion foundations and they just there's no room or margin for error with a lot of the powder products uh, particularly if you're using like western um, products you really need to know what you're doing and how to blend them out and do all of that and I find Find that they just don't work that well with the cushion foundations whereas because this is a creamy texture it works so well if you are using Korean base makeup with it um, I can honestly say that I feel like this concealer palette has helped move me from someone that like really didn't know what they were doing and looked like I didn't know what I was doing with contouring and all of this to someone that maybe has a slightly better idea <laughs> so I actually really really enjoy this the only color that I did not really find myself reaching for was purple. Um, apparently that one is for stubborn dark circles, but to be honest, I found that the lighter beige colors work really well for that. The other thing I did when I was re uh, researching for this episode was take a look what other people have kind of said about this um, concealer palette. And feedback that I saw mentioned that some people thought that it was drying and I must say I have exceptionally dry skin and I did not find it drying at all I wonder if that has anything to do with the base makeup or the skin prep that people were doing those reviews that I saw were in English from people in America on the US version of the brand's website and I noticed that that was kind of like a lot of people that said they enjoyed it but that was the one thing they found it drying I wonder if that that's because they're prepping their skin slightly differently to how we prep our skin when we're doing Korean makeup or even the kinds of products that we're using. Maybe I'm not sure, but I thought that that was interesting because I have not noticed that at all. I have such dry skin. Um, I used that all throughout winter in Korea last year and I did not have any issues with it drying out. So I don't know what that feedback is about. Um, you know, could be, could be, could be anything, I guess. Uh, the other thing I will say is that just to remind you as well, if you do love Korean beauty products, we would love you to try ours. So Jellico is available online at jellico.com and we ship internationally. We're also available at Amazon Australia and in the US and we are the sole distributor of our products. So you do not have to worry about encountering fakes or anything like that if you are shopping on Amazon because we are the only people distributing our product and we definitely don't sell fake versions of it uh, you'll also find us at co bigelow uh, america's oldest apothecary which is in new york city in the west village they have a website online as well and you can find us offline in australia at jardin pharmacy so we would absolutely love for you to try our products we sell uh, sample versions as well of some of our most popular products so you can try them first before committing to buy the full size and we've also got refills available for three of our products as well uh, just so that you can save money when you go back to stock up on your next round of products so just a shameless little plug in there for our own products if you haven't already tried them would really love you to try our brand as well all right, so on to some more trending Korean makeup that I personally think is totally worth it is the Misha M Perfect Cover BB Cream. Now, keep in mind, this is not actually a top trending product in Korea itself, but it's sold tens of millions of units worldwide. And I think it remains one of the most recognized BB creams globally. And that's why I'm going to keep it on my list because people love this product. It's easy to use. It's intuitive. It makes sense. And it's a really good stepping off point for a lot of people when they are 
getting into Korean makeup for the very first time. A lot of people say that it replaces moisturizer, primer, and foundation in their routine. And it does contain sunscreen as well, but because it is a makeup product and not a primary sunscreen, I wouldn't recommend relying solely on this one for your makeup. Uh, sorry, rather for your SPF, for your sunscreen, but it is good to know that you've got that extra backup of the SPF in the makeup just in case, you know, your sunscreen fails. Maybe you didn't apply enough. This is kind of just like another nice second layer. So my personal favorite BB cream is actually Skin 79's Skin Ch uh, Chilgu, as it is called in Korean. Um, and a little bit of a backstory if you didn't know how the brand got its name. So Skin Chilgu sounds very similar in Korean to Skin Chingu, which is Skin Friend. So that's why they decided to call it Skin 79. <laughs> anyway, this product is literally so old at this point. Um, like it, this was trending back in like the early 2000s. It still has a 4.37 star rating on Huahe, which is one of the local Korean um, review apps. It hasn't been trending in Korea for a while, but if you can get your hands on it, I always recommend that one. That is, I just absolutely love that product. I've never fallen out of love in, uh, with it in all of those years. Now, trending Korean makeup that was not worth it personally for me and my dry skin was the Parnell Sika Manu Cushion. Now, I personally found this overly drying. I could not get it to work for my skin in any climate. I took it with me to Australia one time because Australia is a lot um, hotter uh, and, you know, just has a very different climate than Korea. And I also took it with me to the Middle East just because that's obviously heat on a whole different level. And I was thinking maybe if it's drying me out, it just needs a more humid or, you know, hot climate. Maybe Korea is just the air is too dry uh, and that's why but I just could not get this to work for me it is extremely popular in Korea though and that leads me to believe that it might be a better fit for normal oily or combination skin so I don't want to say don't try it to anyone but for me personally and how dry my skin is I don't th think that I would recommend it to other people that do have dry skin so that's just a little caution there it might not be worth it for dry skin other skin types seems to really really love it so I guess you know just Take it, take my review with a grain of salt. Now, another trending Korean makeup product that for me was just not worth it. I did not enjoy this product was AHC's Aura Secret Tone Up Cream. Honestly, this product was a bit of a mess. I myself, I love a tone up cream. I am very, very pale and I sometimes need something to make me look a little bit more alive. And I feel like I, um, I, I appreciate the glow, the subtle kind of brightening effect that a lot of Korean tone up creams can have in them. Now, it also really depends on your, your skin tone before. And I would say some of them are probably going to give you a chalky look as well, depending on, you know, how tan you are. If you have darker skin, they might not work so well. Not all of them will work as well. A lot of tone up creams are also sunscreen. So depending on the other ingredients in the sunscreen, they do not necessarily work for all skin tones. I will say that, but this product, honestly, it was just like, I couldn't make it work at all. It was overly drying. It made me break out. It didn't give me a nice color. It didn't cover dark spots. Uh, and I went and checked out the ratings to see what other people had said, just to like see if that was a really hot take or a wild take. And honestly, it looks like I wasn't alone in that. This seemed to be very common feedback from a lot of Koreans on Huahe as well. And I noticed that the product only has a 3.36 star rating. So all around, probably just not a great product. Um, going to go out on a limb and say that, but I just did not enjoy this. I tried it a bunch of times and then I was just like, I need to quit while I'm ahead. And it has sat in my cupboard pretty much, you know, for the rest of the year. Normally I re-gift or give products that don't suit me because I do have rosacea and I'm very, very reactive and breakout prone. A lot of stuff doesn't work for my skin. So normally I would just give it to someone else that can actually use it. But this product was honestly so bad. I felt bad doing that. So it is just sitting in my cupboard because I, did, I didn't want to give it to anyone else because I'm like, I don't want to be that guy. It's like, here, have my sloppy seconds. And it's also not very good. <laughs> so that one is a no from me. 
Now, <clears throat> one product that I can recommend that I do think is worth it is Roman's Better Than Palette. Uh, and I think it's great value for money. You get a lot of different shades. It has good color payoff, a nice silky feel when you apply them. The one thing I will say about any Korean eyeshadow palettes is that by and large, what you will get is Korean style makeup colors. So you're going to get a natural look, nothing that's crazily pigmented or really hard to blend out in terms of your colors. It's much more muted, lots of nice pinks, browns, and then some shimmer for the inside of your eyes. That's the kind of like tones and colors that we're talking about. So if that is not you, if you don't like Korean style makeup, if you don't want to like recreate the looks of idols or K-pop stars or anything like that at home, like probably not going to be something that you will enjoy. But for me personally, that's the kind of makeup that I like to do. Um, and I just find it very forgiving. Like you can work with it, even if you're not a total pro. Uh, and the, depending on which palette you pick, they're very popular and highly rated in Korea as well. I noticed that a lot of them had an average 4.4 to 4.5 star rating on uh, the Huahe app. So again, I think that these are universally pretty well loved in Korea as well. And that brings me on to my second Korean makeup product from Romand that is completely worth it is their Juicy Lasting Tint. Not a new product at all, but I think the fact that they have stayed around for so long and all they've really done is add to the shades and like create new variations of them it goes to the fact that these are very very popular they work for a lot of people they're best sellers overseas too not just in korea uh, the formulas are just effortless they're just so easy to apply they plump your lips they they function as like a lipstick lip gloss lip tint all in one they let you create multiple different looks uh, i just cannot say enough good things about juicy lasting tint you will definitely find a shade for you because they have so many different ones i think i've mentioned on the show before my personal favorite fig fig love it uh but yeah trending korean makeup that's actually worth it definitely we cannot go past remand now, another one that I will recommend that I know is very popular among our listeners as well is the Hamish Artless Glow Base. Now, apart from the terrible name that makes no sense, this is actually a popular trending product both in Korea and overseas. It's got a 4.29 star rating on Huahe, and it's basically a base makeup primer. It also contains an SPF 50, and I think that kind of trips some people up, and they think think that this is a sunscreen. I see people from time to time, you know, when people are asking what's the best Korean sunscreen to try, I see this product pop up from time to time. This is not sunscreen. It is uh, not supposed to be used for your primary sunscreen protection. It's makeup. So that is one thing that I would say is I would pop a sunscreen on underneath this and then put this one over the top. Uh, it gives you a really, really nice hydrated and you know glowy that natural lit from within glow if you like that look to your skin this is the product for you if you don't like that you want a totally matte look skip this and probably skip a lot of korean primers as well particularly the ones that are like a glow base or a tone up or anything like that they are the opposite of what you're going to want you're going to want to stick to something uh, mattifying something for the pores something to stop oiliness but not something like this the only downside to this one is that it is a little fragranced but it does give your skin a beautiful glow so I guess it just depends are you the kind of person that doesn't like any fragrance in your products um, or are you you know fragrance agnostic you, you, you take your pick another option you might like in a similar vein to this that is quite easy to get your hands on overseas is the Laneige glowy makeup serum as well so a couple of products there to try that are pretty well loved I think if you haven't already tried them I would definitely recommend those ones so that was all I had for you on today's list if you liked this episode if you would like me to do more of these kind of episodes obviously please let me know leave us a rating and a review um, any feedback that you have I am always happy to incorporate it wherever I can uh, so yeah I, I hope that you enjoyed this kind of episode and I will wrap it up here for today I will be back in your ears uh, with more content soon but until next time I will see you on Style Story and Jellico.